Come on, isn't there anything more interesting? Good idea, bring that guy out. Hey there guys, welcome back to another one of my RimWorld guide videos. This time I'll be presenting a list of my top 10 best foods to farm in RimWorld, as well as a few small tips here and there to improve your colony's farming. There are a lot of food items you can farm in the game, plus mods that add an even bigger variety, so I couldn't exactly uh, condense everything into one list. Nevertheless, I've tried my best to list all of the farmable food I find useful, and hopefully this list will be useful to you, too. Note that this list isn't in any particular order of usefulness, so ranking. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like the video too. It helps the algorithm which is totally perfectly balanced. The first food item on my list is cocoa, which you can turn into chocolate. Everyone loves chocolate, right? Okay, maybe some of you don't, but Rimworld pawns certainly do, and it's a very versatile food with multiple benefits. Cocoa and its byproducts have a very long shelf life. This means it's useful to plant in preparation for long trips, where you'll need some sources of food that don't expire halfway through and leave you starving. While chocolate doesn't provide much nutrition, 10% of the hunger bar, it serves double time as a source of recreation, filling up to 10% of a pawn's recreation bar per unit of chocolate. Essentially, it's a recreation on demand, pretty useful in a pinch, regardless of whether your pawns are on a trip or not. For example, you have a few pawns that are skilled fighters. They've been kind of stressed out recently, and you're planning to stick them in a recreation room to boost their mood. Suddenly, a raid occurs. Cutting your plan short, you want to send them out, but their low mood means there's a risk of mental breaks. Pretty horrible timing overall. That's where chocolate comes in. Just pop it in the mouth and they'll be happier. Aside from this, unlike most other recreation boosting drugs, chocolate presents a very low risk of pawns getting addicted. While there are better sources of recreation, they're usually limited in availability and you won't always have access. So you should definitely plant cocoa and turn it into chocolate for situations like this. Usually you want to buy all your chocolate from traders. I don't think that's a good idea, but hey, it's your life. Next up, we have corn. The reason why I say corn is a top 10 crop for me is that it's very lucrative to sell and has a long shelf life. Each harvest of corn produces 22 units with a market value of 1.1 each. Just plant entire fields full of it and reap a large profit. Corn can also grow well in normal and fertile soil and has high health, meaning you don't have to worry too much about ideal planting conditions. On the downside, corn has a very slow growth cycle. While this can be a good thing as it requires less labor to constantly harvest, it also presents a risk. Normally, if a fast growing plant dies due to disasters or getting eaten, you can just replant it with a minimal loss of time, but corn takes 11.3 days to reach harvest. If it dies on the 10th day and you were depending solely on that corn for your food supply or for money, you are screwed. By all means, plant corn, just remember to diversify. At number three on my list is psychoid leaves. These addictive leaves are useful for more than just getting high. You can make drugs and even tea out of them. Okay, some people may not consider tea to be food, but it's close enough since you need to use a stove for it too. Unlike most types of food and beer, psychic tea doesn't provide nutrition. The good thing is it provides all the benefits of beer aside from that, like elevated mood, reduced pain, and lowered fatigue, without the drawback of pawns getting hungover after more than one bottle of beer. As mentioned, you can also turn psychoid leaves into two types of drugs, which are flake and yayo. Both drugs have a significantly higher chance of causing addiction. Flake is a less addictive, weaker form of yayo and sells for less as well. So in general, you should just focus on yayo regardless of whether your pawns are consuming or selling it. The manufacturing process also takes less time and labor than beer, so that's another point in its favor. Not all the food items on this list are for pawns, of course. There are also hay grass, which you'll need to feed your pets and farm animals. In the base game, you have two options for animal feed, hay and nutrient paste. The reason why I'm listing hay is because while it provides less nutrition and needs to be grown unlike nutrient paste, hay is available early on. Nutrient paste requires research, which you won't have access to at all at the start of the game. You can switch to it later on, of course, for more efficiency in terms of feeding your animals, but hay is still a worthwhile early investment. Ho ho ho, Mary, wait, it's not Christmas, but but I am hoeing the soil. <coughs> Sorry for that, that was really lame. Anyway, how's the video so far? If you're enjoying it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like the video so you can keep up with all the cool content I release. Did you hit it? Did you hit the button? All right, it looks like you hit the button. Okay, let's get back to the list. 
Potatoes are the crop to grow when you're planting in infertile environments like deserts, where the soil quality is really poor. Unlike most plants, which won't thrive well in those environments, potatoes will thrive. They're basically the survivalist of the plant world, like your ponds, I guess. Unfortunately, that also means that they don't grow well outside of low fertility soil, with rich soil and hydroponics in particular being a no-no. Potatoes also have a rather short shelf life, so you'll need a constant supply of potatoes if you want them to be your main crop. Speaking of early game crops, one thing you'll definitely need to plant early on is rice. Actually, it's not just that you'll need to. Rice is one of the few available sources of early game food aside from hunting or picking wild berries, and it's delicious. The good thing about rice is that it grows quickly. Three days minimum in hydroponics, it can be ready for harvest in less than two days. When growing rice, you get a constant supply of food for your pawns. No more going hungry unless you purposefully starve them. Aside from this, planting rice is also a good way to train a pawn's grower skill since it's labor intensive requiring constant harvesting and replanting. Now let's have a look at some of the downsides. Rice has to be grown in either rich soil or hydroponics, and it takes poorly to grab. Basically, you can't grow it in a desert. Not the biggest issue if you're already in the middle or late game, but picking a desert starting location will mean having to rely on potatoes or hydroponics. Even if you've settled on fertile land, you'll eventually want to diversify into other crops anyway. Despite the fastest growth time, rice has a very low yield per harvest at only six units. As your colony expands, it definitely won't be enough to feed all your pawns. The solution? Have them fight to death for food. Anyway, the amount of consistent labor needed to harvest rice also makes it less efficient for the mid or late game when you'll need lots of pawns attending to various other tasks like research or base defense. There are also some pretty cool mod plants in RimWorld. One of them is the cabbage. From the vanilla plants expanded mod, it isn't particularly noteworthy in terms of nutrition or yield, but one thing that does stand out about this plant is the immunity to toxic fallout. Normally, when toxic fallout occurs, all plants caught in the radius will take damage and wither to death, and you won't be able to replant them unless the fallout is cleaned up or disappears. Cabbages are a way to work around that. When under the effect of toxic fallout, they won't wither. Instead, they just stop growing for the duration of the effect. Since cabbages also have a fast growth rate, 6.2 days minimum, this can be useful to maintain your food supply even when disaster strikes. Or you can also feed your pawns human meat from raiders or their own colleagues, friends, and family. Beautiful. <laughs> Next up, pumpkins, which are also a VGP mod exclusive. Like cabbages, pumpkins are very resistant to adverse conditions, although not toxic fallout. This crop has very high health, meaning it can survive diseases or natural disasters that would kill other plants. Pumpkins can also withstand botched harvest, so in the case you need to harvest using a pond with low grower skill, the risk of losing resources when doing so is lowered. Keep in mind that they're not immune, just pretty safe bet when stocking up food. The disadvantage advantage of pumpkins is that they have the slowest growth rate of all VGP plants excluding fruit trees at 10.4 days and can't be grown in hydroponics at all. Sorry, I was taking a quick nap in the pumpkin patch. Guess I overslept. I hope this video has been helpful for you so far. Feel free to leave your suggestions and questions and feedback in the comments down below. You can also let me know of your top 10 plants. Alright, let's get back to work. I've talked a lot about farming plants, but what about food you can farm from animals? Well, aside from meat and eggs, one notable animal byproduct is milk. In the base game, milk is important for producing fine and lavish meals, which provide a higher increase in mood and nutrition than simple meals. Unless you want to stick to feeding pawns simple meals and nutrient paste throughout the game, you'll need to get milk from animals like dromedaries or cows. Of course, they have to be female. <laughs> <laughs> Vanilla cooking expanded also adds cheese, which you can make from milk or eat or be sold for a high price. It's covered in more detail in my other video on everything you need to know about RimWorld foods, so you can check it out at the link in the description below. This isn't technically farmable in the base game, as you can only get it from hives, but there is a mod called Jelly Farm allowing you to build a miniature hive with harvestable insect jelly. This hive can be reused once constructed. Classified as raw food, insect jelly never spoils and only deteriorates with exposure to the elements. Its main purpose is to provide roughly 8% gluttonous recreation per unit, making insect jelly a good emergency food like chocolate. When moods are low, it's not very suitable for sustenance though, since its nutrition value is very low at only
only 0.5%. Oh, my bad, 0.05%, even lower. Royal Insect Jelly is an even better variant from the vanilla faction's expanded Insectoids mod, which also boosts immunity while nourishing pawn. Warning, withdraws the and turn a pawn into a friendly neutral mega spider. Now that you've seen my top 10 foods to farm, what about tips for farming? Two major things to consider when growing crops are the seasons and environment. Different seasons bring temperature differences, and these temperature shifts can massively affect crop yields for better or worse. Crops tend to grow best in summer, while spring and autumn have more even growth rates. And winter prevents most plants from growing, although there are mods to modify that. If the season is unsuitable for growing plants, but you really need to grow some, don't worry, sun lamps and greenhouses can act as a substitute for summer in a pinch. Just remember to turn them off when you're not using them to save electricity. Note that even in biomes with permanent summer weather, you should still set up a greenhouse. This relates to my second point about the environment. Aside from seasons, environmental factors like toxic fallout can still render the open air hostile to plant life, which is why you'll need a greenhouse. Apart from those factors, soil fertility is also vital. Different biomes like deserts, icy tundras, and temperate areas have different base levels of soil fertility. While hydroponics have the highest fertility at 280%, as stated earlier, each plant has its own minimum fertility requirements to thrive. Normally, soil fertility can be altered, but there are lots of mods allowing you to do so. One mod I like is the Rimworld Farming mod. It's a simple mod that adds tilled and cultivated soil, which increases soil fertility by 120% and 180% respectively. Alternatively, if you're using the Vanilla Plants Expanded mod, it also has this functionality. That's it for now. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Click on another video. I know there's probably one on your screen right now and it's very interesting, but you have something to do. It's okay. You can do that thing later. Click on the video.